I go, so yep, yeah, I'm Stephen. Um, I'm a developer based in Dundee, Scotland. Um, I've lived there six years now. I went to university in Dundee, and now I'm kind of working at a company uh, called Tag Games. Uh, we make mobile games. Um, I also kind of run my own indie studio called Insert Imagination. Um, now that's really important for this. Um, the thing I really wanted to kind of talk about is starting up the Scottish Rainbow Game Dev community. Um, this talk is going to be kind of focused towards that, the kind of thought process I went through to kind of create this entity as such, um, and kind of what I've learned and what I've kind of gained from that. Um, it's all been very much the last four months, so it's been very kind of rapid and stuff. So I'm just going to kind of talk and then see where this goes. So there's a huge game development uh, scene in Scotland. And we've got a huge kind of pedigree almost. And there's a lot of kind of like old game developers such as DMA Designs and several others. And they kind of break apart of DMA Designs and real-time worlds into lots of other new companies across all of Scotland. We've got indie companies. We've got AAA companies. There's just so much, there's so much variety in Scotland in terms of development. And there's a huge community behind that. The Scottish Games Network Facebook group has over 2,000 members, which is fantastic. Um, it's good to see a really passionate kind of, the way I'm going to use this audience, that's not really what I'm thinking of. Um, 2,000 members are really passionate about games development and passionate about the community and stuff like that. Um, and the problem with that is it's really easy to get your voice lost in this giant community. Um, 2,000 people, you post in a forum, and it can just get maybe five or six likes, especially when you're saying asking for feedback from fellow developers. It's quite easy to get lost and overwhelmed by the number of people. Um, it can also be that you might be lost or not feel comfortable approaching 2,000 people with your idea. It can be quite difficult if, you say, you were to approach people on the street with something like that. Um, you might not feel comfortable doing it in a group. Um, so this was something that I tweeted out just after GDC. Um, I was kind of jet lagged and tired and just really wanting to kind of do something. This all kind of came about from going to several um, LGBT meetups in GDC, at GDC. And they were great. I had an amazing time. Um, but it was very, it was very focused on the locale of the area. It was very much um, American issues and stuff like that. And I feel like that I, I didn't feel represented there. I didn't feel like, as a Scottish developer, I felt like I had a voice there. And this was very much about being able to create a voice for Scottish developers, myself included, um, at this kind of environment. And not to be critical of anything of um, anything that went on at GDC, again, it was all amazing. Um, it all kind of came from several talks with friends and colleagues, both um, European and American, about how they view game dev and stuff. It was just kind of wanting to find a community in Scotland that was smaller and actually feel more represented by that community. So I threw out this tweet. And I got a few replies from some really passionate and friendly people um, saying, yeah, totally start up this Scottish game dev LGBT group. Cool. Awesome. So where does this go from here? I kind of didn't really expect anything to happen from this. I kind of expected maybe a dozen friends or so and a few other people. And they just kind of get forgotten about alongside hundreds of other Facebook groups that nobody really cares about. But it seemed to gain a lot of traction really quickly. People who People from all over Scotland, uh, Edinburgh, Dundee, Glasgow, all seemed really passionate and really caring for this idea. Something that I kind of thought about jet lagged in London airport, trying not to fall asleep and miss my, uh, miss my flight. And it was just, there's something really empowering about knowing that people kind of wanted this. And the shock that nobody else had made this kind of community. Like, you kind of find, ugh, you kind of find development communities for like every country and every city and stuff like that, but there hadn't been a Scottish LGBT group, and we were all really surprised by that. Um, 
So then it was about figuring out what we wanted to kind of do from this and where we go now. Um, the first thing I kind of did was kind of gauge what people's interests were and what they wanted to kind of see from this. Did people want to have meetups? Did people want to do formal presentations, a bit like this? Uh, did people want to do game jams? And overwhelmingly, people said, why don't we just be really casual, get like a casual meetup going? And we managed to get something together in Dundee uh, over a month ago now. And surprisingly, there was quite a decent turn. I booked space for about 16 people in a bar. And we kind of filled that area and overflowed into um, some graduation showcase area, which we shouldn't have been in. Um, <laughs> it was quite nice in that regard. Um, but it was nice to see these faces I'd never seen before, people who identified like I did um, and were still really passionate about game development. And it was almost as if I'd brought a community. It sounds really like, oh, how do I want to say this? I feel like I brought out a community, but that's not really, I'm not putting like kind of anything on my shoulders. I feel like all I did was just create a group and I'm hoping people kind of run with it. Um, this is really incoherent, I'm really sorry about this. <laughs> um, so really I just wanted to create a friendly and nice atmosphere and group where people didn't feel like they were losing their voice, where they could discuss and be open about work and what they wanted to do and university students and actual uh, game developers, whether they were indie or AAA, and just make it completely open and to allies as well and to actually bring something from people, people from that might not feel represented by just a Scottish game development group, that might have felt overwhelmed by a gigantic LGBT game dev group, which again, there are several, but again, your voice can be lost amongst 2,000 people. Um, for me, all of this matters because for me, it's been about finding a community that I didn't really know existed beyond a few dozen people that I knew. Um, last count, which was Wednesday, was that there was about 100 people in this group, and that's a good, good chunk more than I expected in this community. Um, it's still very casual, it's still very early days and stuff, but I'm hoping, um, I'm hoping we can create some, not a movement as such, but actually be able to kind of collaborate with ideas and start game jams and get collaboration and whether there's jobs going in companies to encourage employers to hire from the LGBT community within Scotland rather than just going through normal channels as they do. And kind of trying to find where we go from here. Um, it's been very difficult kind of trying to get my head around what to actually do with this group that might or might not take off or as such. So for me, it's been just a lot of kind of thought work and trying to speak with other people. At the minute, we're planning a game jam at the end of August, just before all the university students go back. And I'm really hoping to get some collaboration from all of the people in the group um, to create stuff that we wouldn't normally see, to get people working with people that they wouldn't normally work with, and to create friendships and meet new people that you wouldn't have normally met through all of these other uh, channels, just because of the, the huge variety of people in these groups. Um, so yeah, um, kind of talking about what I'm hoping to achieve from this. This quote kind of comes up every time I'm wanting to do some sort of presentation on something. Um, I feel like creating this group has allowed me to kind of surround myself with people of similar, similar mindsets, of similar interests. Um, and I, I think this is quite applicable to anyone who works in any creative industry or any tech industry. Surround yourself with people who are going to empower you and make you feel good. And if someone's going to make you feel like shit, then they're not worth it. And that's true for life and true for development and work and stuff like that. You should always kind of be happy and enjoy your work and enjoy what you're doing. And surround yourself with people who also enjoy what they're doing and enjoy your work. And yeah. <laughs> so. I really hope that the Scottish Rainbow Dev Group is the start of something eventually bigger, uh, bigger than where I want to take it, um, bigger than what I'm expecting. But I don't really know. It's early days. Um, I'm hoping to just have fun and build a community of fresh, happy-faced people, and we'll see kind of what happens there.
thank you, everyone, for listening to this incoherence for the last few minutes.